after studying this module you shall be able to know what are physical evidences their importance in crime investigation and the type of physical evidences introduction physical evidences are objects that can establish that a crime has been committed or can establish a link between a suspect and the victim of the crime with each other and with the scene of crime as all the crime scenes are unique in nature so almost anything can be treated as a physical evidence depending on the type of crime and the circumstances under which the crime was committed it may not be possible to enlist a type of objects to be recovered as physical evidence in a particular type of case several different types of physical evidences can like pieces of glass paint soil semen saliva hair nail clippings nail clippings fingers and footprints are very commonly found at the crime scenes related to the different type of cases however the way given to each piece of evidence is ultimately decided by the jury after recognizing the physical evidence at the scene need to be collected and packed properly while handling the evidences care must be exercised to avoid contamination as far as possible now the crime investigation crime or offense or a criminal offense is any unlawful activity which is punishable by law whenever any crime is committed there must be some reason behind it and are mostly related either to money or revenge or emotions because of hate anger or love every crime scene is unique maybe because of any particular reason or because of style to commit crime at every scene the range of human activity is diverse that almost anything presents can be considered as physical evidence under one circumstance or the other the physical evidence if recognized properly handled at the scene of crime and proficiently analyzed and interpreted in the laboratory can contribute significantly in linking the suspect and victim with each other and with the scene of crime now the purpose in any crime scene the following three entities are very important where a useful information in the form of physical evidence can be obtained first is the suspect second is the victim and the third is the crime scene main purpose of forensic investigation of crime is to provide useful information about linking the suspect and victims with each other and with the scene of crime through scientific analysis of physical evidences present at any of three entities mentioned above in majority of crime cases two of the above entities are known and the third is missing mostly suspected person link needs to be established by scientifically analysis of physical evidences recovered either from the scene of crime or from victim this analysis not only helps in establishing a common origin of sample of evidence but also provides a number of different types of information about the crime as already said that every crime scene is unique so there is no single accuracy way to process the crime scene therefore each scene must be evaluated individually on its merit if appreciated and employed properly at the crime scene the science might act as a powerful and effective tool to investigate the crime and prosecute criminals it can help to reveal the facts in any type of case or situation involving physical evidences provided the crime scene is protected safeguarding and preservation of evidences are fundamental to the successful solution of a crime now evidentiary clues the evidences which are present physically at the crime scene are called physical evidence after recognized correctly at crime scene there is a need to collect pack and send them to forensic science laboratory properly along with the list of required analysis it is mainly concerned with the identification and individualization of traces of evidences and establishing a common origin of samples of evidences to finally reconstruct the event now the paul kirk described the physical evidences in united nations office on drug and crime unodc manual as wherever he steps 
whatever he touches, whatever he leaves, even unconsciously will serve as a silent evidence against him. Not only his fingerprints or his footprints, but his hair, the fibers of his clothes, the glass he breaks, the tool marks he leaves, the paint he scratches, the blood or semen he deposits or collects, all these and more be a mute witness against him. This is evidence that does not forget. It is not confused by the excitement of the moment. It is not absent because human witness are. It is factual evidence. Physical evidence cannot be wrong. It cannot prejudice itself. It cannot be wholly absent. Only its interpretation can err. Only human failure to find it, study and understand it can diminish its value. The role of forensic scientists start from the crime scene with the recognition and recovery of physical evidence. It proceeds further with its analysis and the evaluation of the results in a forensic science laboratory and the presentation of the findings in the form of reports to judges, prosecutors and lawyers. From the first responders to the end users of the information, all personnel involved should have an adequate understanding of the forensic process, the scientific disciplines and the specialized services provided by forensic laboratories. Besides other, the physical evidences contribute significantly in placing the perpetrator at the scene, linking a suspect with a weapon, establishing the scope of the crime scene, distinguishing between primary and secondary crime scene, linking crime scene areas in cases of abduction, vehicle use and dump sites, and in supporting or refusing witness statements. There are different types of evidences found at the crime scene. These evidences individually or collectively can play a significant role in providing an investigative lead by answering the following questions. What took place at a crime scene? The number of people involved? The sequence of events which means reconstruction of scene. The significance of each evidence is often unknown at the time of collection from scene of crime but as the investigation pro proceeds further seemingly important evidence at the time of collection may not be able to contribute much and vice versa. For these reasons, the forensic scientist needs to cover every corner of the crime scene and treat each and every piece of evidence as vital. So every little object at a crime scene must be considered to be significant until thoroughly examined in the laboratory or investigation reached to the fruitful conclusion. Most often or not, the forensic scientist only obtain usable evidence from a small percentage of the objects collected at a crime scene. It seems that much of the examination of evidence is not very fruitful, but the discovery of unexpected evidence such as a fingerprint or hair can break investigation wide open. Now, the types of physical evidences. There are legal distinctions among different types of categories of evidences that help to determine its admissibility in the court of law. Evidence have been categorized differently by different scientists, but the most convenient categorization which covers most type of evidences are as follows. First is physical evidence, second testimonial or personal evidence, third miscellaneous evidence, fourth corpus delicti evidence. Now the physical evidence. The evidences in this category are also called the real evidences and are indirect type of evidences which consist of tangible articles such as hairs, fiber, latent finger and footprints and other biological and chemical materials. They are discussed in detail in the later portion of this module. Now the testimonial or personal evidence. This category of evidence is related to direct evidence and includes either of the following. First is in the form of testimony or statement given by any person at the scene of crime. Second can be subjective and colored by a person attitude. Third, an eyewitness confession history not usable in court. Now third is the miscellaneous evidences. This category of evidences include items which do not fall in any of the two previous categories which can be either subjective or objective and may not always be admissible in the court of law. Example can be polygraphy, voice analysis, psychological examinations. Now corpus delicti evidence. This category of evidence includes evidences which can provide that a crime has been committed. Before actual investigation can be initiated, there must be sufficient proof that a crime has taken place. Examples include dead body, broken window at the point of entry, 
stolen or broken items like safe etc. Now this particular figure is showing the crime scene showing various types of physical evidences. At first instance one feels surprised is there any need to categorize evidence in so many different ways. But to ascertain the value of any evidence, way of collection and material in the form of control to be collected for respective evidence it is required and also most important is what sort of examination can be conducted and type of conclusions can be drawn from the analysis of these evidences. As the evidences reach the forensic science laboratory, they are subjected to several different kinds of analysis as per the requirements by the investigating officer for each and every item sent. Some of the evidence have to pass through more than one division for analysis. Each department analyzes the evidence to report results to the court of law. Now the common type of physical evidence. The following indirect type of evidences which can be scientifically examined in the laboratory can be divided into two following categories non-living and living. Now the non-living physical evidences. In this the first is glass pieces. Window or ventilator glass panes, particles or fragments that are found or transferred to a person or object involved in a crime may be substantial evidence. Such evidence whether broken by a bullet or other means may help in linking a suspect or piece of evidence to a crime scene and be used to deduce cause of breakage direction and angle of penetration. Additionally, it is commonly available substrate for fingerprints and blood to be present on broken glass. Now the second is soils and natural resources. Any items, cloths or footwears containing soil, wood, natural resources like minerals or other vegetative matter could help in linking a person or object to a particular location. For example, soil embedded in shoe and vault insulation found on garments. Most samples of such are unable to prove, make, match but may be with the presence of a rare material. Often such type of evidences are considered circumstantial but are useful in supporting other evidences in a case. Now the third is paint. Paint evidence in the form of a spear, chip or dry may be transferred from the surface of one object to another during the perpetration of a crime. Most paint evidences originates from crimes involving hit and run cases with a control sample to compare a suspect sample paint can be masked to a vehicle with nearly 100% accuracy. Now the fourth is question documents. Any question documents whether hand or typewritten submitted to laboratory so that its authenticity and source of it can be determined. These type of analysis are utilized mainly with ransom notes, suicide notes, death threats and forgeries. When typewriters were used, it was quite simple to match a machine to its productions. With the development of inkjets and laser printers, matching printed documents have become nearly impossible. The exception would be if a document were to be printed with an uncommon font or with the rare type of ink. Since the detection use of typewriters, document analysis is now primarily concentrated on handwriting documents. Although each person's handwriting is original, no one reproduces writing in the same way twice. Forgers are resourceful and inventive during the attempts to reproduce signatures. For these reasons, handwriting analysis really provide a 100% match. To sum up, the other type of activity in document division includes detection of forgeries and alterations, comparison of handwritings, reconstruction of destroyed documents, identify and compare printers, typewriters or copiers which have been used to produce a document. Now the fifth is firearm and ammunition. Firearm as well as discharged or intact ammunition are often important evidence in any firing investigation. In fact, it is almost impossible to get a conviction in shooting cases without the discovery of such evidences. When anybody accompanied by a suspected weapon, a fired bullet or spent cartridge case may be matched to a weapon as well as a fingerprint is matched to a finger. Now the sixth, powder residue. A person or item may be suspected of containing gunshot residue or residue discharge from firearm. The presence and distribution of powder residue indicates if, when and where a firearm may have been used to fire. It is almost impossible to fire a weapon and avoid 
depositing such evidences on your person or surroundings. As these substances are quite difficult to remove from skin, clothing and imitate objects, they can be used to determine the range of fire and the person who fired it. Now the seven explosives and petroleum products. The explosive and petroleum products are devices containing an explosive charge as well as all objects removed from the scene of an explosion or arson that are suspected to contain the residue of an explosive petroleum material. The presence of these items becomes significant in determining from where a fire or explosion originated and advanced. Another aspect of petroleum product is related to adulteration for which proper collection and analysis help in determining the chemical composition of such materials which may be helpful in identifying the origin as well as uses of the substances. Now the marks. Marks of tool, foot and tire marks. Impressions which are 3D in nature include tool marks, tire marking, shoe or footprints, depressions in loose or soft soil and all other forms of track impressions and bite marks in the skin or various types of foodstuffs. The different types of tool marks present on any object made by another object will serve as a tool in a crime. The examination of a suspect tool matches may be made to nearly certainty. This type of evidence is approached in a similar way as the impression present on bullet for analysis. Continuous efforts are on to generate and compile large database of different type of impressions. In such cases, evidence may provide very important and useful information to the investigators so the analysis can be conducted even in the absence of a control. Now the ninth, drugs. Drugs are substances which volatile the law regulating the sale, manufacture, distribution and use of drugs or chemicals and necessitate to be seized. A large number of perpetrators committing other types of crime are involved with drugs also. The production of drugs is a big business with increasing advancement in technology and easy availability of chemicals it has become much more easier to manufacture illicit drugs and more difficult to apprehend suspects. Upon recovery of suspected drugs at the scene or on a body samples are packed and sent to the forensic science laboratory for analysis. Preliminary or spot tests are to discover the identity of a drug. Further confirmatory tests will identify the strength of the drug and its component. The identification of drugs have been perfected by the application of different instruments. Although such equipments are expensive and require constant maintenance, the results from such tests are indispensable. Now living physical evidences in this human body materials. First, blood, organs and other physiological fluids. The blood and body fluids, semen and saliva, will be subjected to biochemical and other analysis to determine the identity and origin and then individuality. By examining the amount, color and distribution of such fluids, an investigator may able to make several predictions about what took place at a scene. A smear may indicate an attempt clean up or dragging of a body. At left, each blood spatter is characteristic of different circumstances. Now in this table, blood spattering pattern is given. If the blood drops from one foot, it will form a vertical drop. Now if it drops from three feet, it will form a vertical drop. And from the six feet, it will also form a vertical drop. But if it drops from more than six feet, it converts into splashes. Splashes occur when blood flies through the air at an angle and hits on the object. The characteristic exclamation mark shape points in the direction of movement. After careful collection, nearly every type of organ or organic fluid will be subjected to blood typing and DNA analysis. Toxicology tests may also detect the possible existence of drug, alcohol or poison. Blood typing used to exclude the innocent and pinpoint the possible suspects or victim is still a useful tool. However, recent advancement in technique, equipments and collection procedures have elevated DNA testing to the most common type of biological materials. Now the second is fingerprints. It is generally known 
to almost everyone that when a person touches an article with their bare hands according to Lucard principle of exchange that a fingerprint is left behind. Such prints are called latent prints as they are not visible to naked eye. The challenge for the forensic scientists is to develop to make it visible these latent prints so as to identify their owners. In the past, matching these prints require a narrow field of suspects but with the utilization of computers and large database, identifying a suspect prints have become more routine. Now, the third is hair and fiber. Hair is most often found at a crime scene and is fairly easy to compare and identify with the use of a microscope. Any animal or human hair present at the scene could be linked a person or animal to a crime. With a number of samples to compare hairs from a crime scene may be matched with a suspect with a high degree of certainty. Upon the discovery of root along with follicle tissue, DNA analysis can provide exact genetic information which is helpful in matching the quotient sample with a specimen. Similarly, the fibers which are either natural or synthetic are easily transferred from objects to person or from person to person. If collected and examined properly, can establish a relationship between objects and or person. With the exceptions of DNA analysis, fibers are examined in almost the same manner as hair. When control fibers are available for comparison, a match is often made with a high degree of certainty. In the absence of control fibers, an experienced observer can provide valuable insights on the origin of a fiber. They may be able to, to predict if such a fiber originated from clothes, towel, carpets or other sources. Bones and bone fragments are found at the crime scene. The analysis will answer the following questions. Are they animal or human? If animal, to which part it belong? Whether of right or left side? Next, whether the reconstruction is possible from bone fragments or not? Whether the bone or bone fragments can be individualized? In case of identity, the original ivory from duplicate cross section may help. Diatom test can help in confirming the cause of death and possible site of drowning and also help in declining anti and postmortem drowning which means person was alive on entering the water or not. Now the summary. At every scene the range of human activity is so diverse that almost anything present can be considered as physical evidence under one circumstances or the other. Second, the role of forensic scientists start with the recognition and recovery of physical evidence. Third, as the evidence reaches the forensic science laboratory, they are subjected to several kinds of analysis as per requirements mentioned by the investigating officer for each and every item sent. Next, most paint evidence originates from crimes involving hit and run cases. Now the last, the blood and the body fluids, semen and saliva will be subjected to biochemical and other analysis to determine the identity and origin and then individuality.